So let me introduce Professor Masatoshi Sato from Kyoto University briefly. So Professor Masatoshi Sato got his bachelor, master, PhD, all of his academic degree from Kyoto University. Especially he did his PhD under Professor Masakawa Toshide, one of the Nobel laureate. So <clears throat> I know that he contributed a lot of work in the high energy physics, but I'm more familiar with his uh, uh, pioneering work in this condensed matter physics. So he, co he contributed many works in topological superconductivity. Also recently, he made a very important contribution in non-Hermitian physics, including, <clears throat> including classification of non-Hermitian phase, exceptional point, and also some non-Hermitian skin effect. So today, he is going to talk about the bulk boundary correspondence in point gap topological phases. So Professor Sato, you may start. Uh, thank you very much for a very nice introduction. And uh, so uh, my name is Master Sato uh, from Ikawa Institute for Theoretical Physics, Kyoto University. And uh, today, uh, so that, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer uh, for inviting me very, uh, very nice uh, workshop. And uh, today I'm going to tell about our recent work on the bulk boundary correspondence in uh, uh, point gap topological phases. Uh, it, it is a particular uh, class of uh, topological phases in no Hamilton systems. And uh, this talk is based on the collaboration with these people, uh, Daichi Nakamura, and he is my student. And uh, Takumi Besho, he is my former student, and now he is in uh, Toshiba Corporation. And based on this paper, I give a talk. And I also wrote a review paper about no Hampshire topological phenomena with uh, Nobe Kyokuma. He is an assistant professor at YATP. Uh, so if you are interested in uh, this subject, please read this review paper as well. So here's out of my talk. So in the, in the first part of my talk, I would like to uh, uh, explain the basics, basics of the no Hampshire topological phase. And I would like to explain the two different topological phases in the non-Hampton systems. The first one is a line gap topological phases, and the second one is a point gap topological phases. And then I'd like to explain the very typical uh, topological phenomena intrinsic to non-Hampton system, uh, that is a non-Hampton skin effect. Uh, then in the second part, I will explain the, uh, our recent work on the bulk boundary correspondence in point gap to bulk pages. <laughs> so, uh, so first, I, I will explain the, uh, my motivation on the study of the non Hamilton to bulk pages. So, as you know, that after the discovery of the topological insulator, uh, we know that uh, so that we can realize the variety of the topological pages by controlling symmetries. For example, we know that uh, so the, by breaking the spin rotation symmetry, uh, we can somehow realize a minor fermion even in the space superconductors. So we know that uh, just by considering the direct fermion coupled with the space condensate, uh, we can realize a minor fermion. And in this case, we know that uh, so that we have a spin orbital interaction in the direct fermion. So the spin rotation symmetry is broken. And we can show that the spin, breaking of the spin rotation symmetry is very necessary to uh, realize a uh, uh, minor fermion in a uh, 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 superconducting state. So this part, this part is very necessary. And we also know that uh, by using the crystal symmetry, uh, we can realize uh, new topological phases. For example, if you consider the gray leaf rotation symmetry, uh, we can realize a new topological number G for topological number. Uh, this topological number uh, never happened in the conventional classification uh, by, the, by using the Arthur and the Trumbauer symmetry. And so, the, uh, so we need a uh, uh, space group symmetry to obtain such a new topological phases. And correspondingly, so that we have a very uh, exotic, uh, maybe twisted surface. And actually, in the real material, we can realize this kind of surface state. For example, that if you consider the potassium mercury antimon, and this, uh, this material has a great refrigeration symmetry, and they predict that uh, so the, they actually have uh, maybe switch surface state, and those which they call the, uh, our glass fermions. So anyway, so the, we know that we can realize the variety of topological phases uh, by controlling symmetries. 
And uh, today, I'd like to explain that uh, no harm is a new promising direction to explore the novel topological phases. Actually, we can consider the harmonicity as a kind of symmetry. So the, by breaking the harmonicity, uh, we can realize the new topological phases. And as you know, the Hamiltonian the usual support to be Hamishan. And this is a textbook assumption, uh, but uh, this assumption is not so obvious. Actually, if you consider the case of through and the excitation in the real system, uh, they always have a finite lifetime. So in addition to the real part of the energy, uh, we also have a major part of the energy. So we naturally have a no harm TC in the real systems. So <clears throat> we can say that even when the original Hamilton is a Hamilton, the effect of Hamilton can be no Hamilton. So that's the reason why we can consider the no no Hamilton Hamiltonian very natural. And uh, actually, the, so the no Hamilton TC gives an interesting novel structure in topological phases. So the more than 10 years ago, so the, we considered the possible uh, topological phases in no Hamilton systems for the first time. And uh, at that moment, so the, I considered uh, our several different uh, no Hamilton systems. Uh, but uh, today I only <coughs> explained the uh, particular R model, which we call the SO3 to Latin model. And this is a no Hamilton version of the mirror topological insulators. And we, now we are considering the two dimensional systems. And we assume that uh, so the system supports the uh, mirror reflection metric with respect to the uh, uh, Z direction. Uh, so with, uh, if you neglect uh, uh, no Hamilton uh, term. Actually, this is a Hamiltonian of the mirror topological insulators. And we also have on site harm, no Hamilton potentials here. And interestingly, so the, if, so the uh, interestingly, uh, so the, even in the presence of the non-harmonic potentials, we can show that the system uh, can retain the uh, uh, reality of the bulk spectrum. And we can also define the bulk topological number, and uh, we can obtain the edge set. And here I show the spectrum with a boundary. And uh, so that we have a bulk state, well, which gives our real spectrum. And we also have an edge state. And interestingly, so the, uh, if you can see the, this uh, edge state very carefully, so the, you can find the uh, new structures. So here I show the close look at this point. And uh, so, the, so the, we find that this is not a simple helical and chiral state. So the, as you know, the, so the, usually it's a, at the general point, so the, we already had boundary version. And, but in this case, uh, we can keep the gap structures. And here is the image part of the energy. And uh, actually we can see that uh, along this line, we can keep the real, reality of the spectrum. And uh, at this uh, line, we have a compressed spectrum. So the, we found that the, so the no harmonicity to, impo, to uh, have a, play the important role to keep the gap structure of the boundary state. So for, from this observation, we conclude that uh, uh, no harm, uh, presence of the no harm to particle phases. So now we know that uh, even the no harm system, uh, we can have a uh, topological phases. So the natural question is the following. Uh, what distinguishes the non hamilton topological phases uh, from the conventional Hamilton ones? And our answer is the following. Uh, first distinct future in non hamilton topological phase is the presence of the new fundamental symmetry. Actually, the, from the definition, uh, Hamilton conjugation of the Hamiltonian is different from the original Hamiltonian. So if you take the transpose of this relation, uh, we have these relations. So <coughs> complex conjugation of the Hamiltonian is different from the transpose of the Hamiltonian. And uh, this note that uh, usually so to define the time reversal symmetry and the particle symmetry, uh, we use uh, complex conjugation. And, uh, but this implies that uh, so that we can use the uh, transpose to define the symmetry. So we can obtain the symmetry based on the transpose. 
So the, this, actually, the, this uh, uh, <coughs> enhanced the portable topological, uh, topo, uh, portable uh, symmetries. And also, the, we can enhance the 10 symmetry classes into the 38 classes. And we also found that uh, there exists a stake and distinct features. And actually, the, we found that uh, so the, we may have a new gap structure in uh, non Hampton systems. And uh, this is the main subject of, of this, today's talk. So now I'd like to explain the gap structure uh, very quickly. And uh, so the, <clears throat> uh, before going to explain the gap structure in the non Hampton systems, uh, first, I'd like to explain the gap structure in the uh, Hamsan systems. So the, in the, in the Hamsan systems, uh, we can define the gap by using the Fermi energy. So we can say the system is a gap if there is no overlap between the state and the uh, Fermi energy. And then we can say that this is empty state because the uh, energy is larger than the Fermi energy. And we can say that this is occupied state because the energy is less than the Fermi energy. So anyway, by using the Fermi energy, uh, we can obtain a uh, unique gap structures. However, situation can be different in the no Hamiltonian systems. In the no Hamiltonian systems, energy can be complex. So the so the, we need to consider the complex energy plane, <coughs> complex energy plane. Uh, but even in this case, uh, we can define the gap by using the Fermi energy line. And even in this case, we can say that the system is gap because there is no border between G state and the Fermi energy line. And we can say that uh, this is empty because the real part of energy is larger than the Fermi energy. And we can say that this is occupied because the real part of energy is less than the Fermi energy. So even in the no Hamilton system, we can define the gap in this manner. And we can say that, uh, so that we can call this gap structure the real line gap because we refer to the real energy, real part of the energy to define the empty and occupied state. And interestingly, so the, uh, if you, the system supports the real structures, and so we also have another uh, definition of the line gap. After the instead of this line, uh, we can also consider that this Fermi energy line. Even in this case, we can say that system has gap because there is no overlap between this state and the Fermi energy line. And in this case, we can say that this is occupied because the imaginary part of the energy is less than the Fermi energy. And we can say that this is empty because the imaginary part of the energy is greater than the Fermi energy. So the, by using the, this Fermi line, uh, we can also define the, uh, another uh, line gap. And we say that this is the imaginary line gap because we refer to the imaginary part of the energy to define the occupied and empty state. So anyway, in general, we have a multiple definition of band gaps. And interestingly, these line gaps are natural generalization of the gaps in the Hamshan or the anti hamshan systems. And actually, we can prove the following theorem. And actually, we can show that if a non hamshan Hamiltonian has a line gap, then it can be continuously deformed into the Hamishan Hamiltonian. To obtain the uh, rigorous proof of this theorem, uh, we need to use the uh, projection plate. Uh, but the uh, uh, basic idea is very simple. Here I saw the uh, typical spectrum of a non Hamishan system with a line gap. And, uh, you, and as you can see, that we can. Uh, <coughs> This spectrum uh, can be continuously formed into this one. Actually, uh, so if you move this spectrum on the this axis, and if you move this uh, uh, spectrum on the this axis, we naturally have this one. And actually, uh, by using the projection operator, uh, we can deform the non Hamilton Hamiltonian into the Hamilton Hamiltonian. So anyway, so the uh, these two <laughs> states. Uh, continue to deform into each, each other. So this means that the classification of the line gap to particle phases uh, coincides with that of the uh, Hamishan to particle phases. We can always deform this non Hamishan system into the Hamishan one. So you might think that uh, this result doesn't uh, does mean that uh, line gap to particle phases are boring. 
uh, but uh, this is not the truth. After the non HMTC provide a new functionality of the vertical faces. So after the, in the case of the non HMTC systems, uh, uh, energy of the edge mode uh, can be imaginary. So the, this implies that uh, so the we we can have an uh, enhancing mode in uh, as a uh, edge mode. So the, by using this enhancing mode, we can obtain the raising mode. Actually, the, so the, by using the non hamsham version of uh, SSS model, so the, they realize uh, uh, they obtain the uh, raising mode by using the uh, in gap space in gap state of the uh, non hamsham SSS model. And we can also uh, consider we can also consider the non hamsham version of the quantum hole states. And uh, they realize a uh, uh, raising mode by using the edge mode of the quantum hole state. So the so the so we can say that non harm CC uh, provide a new functionality of the particle phases. So in may so the by using the line gap structures, uh, we can obtain the uh, so called uh, line gap the particle phases. And interestingly, this is not the only possible uh, topological phases in non hamiltonian systems. Importantly, we can also define uh, different gap structure intrinsic to non hamiltonian systems. So as I mentioned before, the, so in the previous slide, so uh, I used the Fermi's line to define the gap structures, but instead of a line, so we can also use a Fermi's point to define gap structures. So even in this case, so we can say the system has gap because there is no border between this state and the Fermi energy point. And we say that this is a point gap. And interestingly, in this case, there's no distinction between the occupied and the empty state. So that we can consider the these situations. Even in this case, we can say that the system has gap because there is no border between this state and the reference point. And uh, remarkably, uh, this point gap structure can describe a uh, new topological phases. Actually, uh, we can consider two different situations. In the uh, left figure, so the, uh, this state includes uh, this reference point. And uh, in the right figure, uh, this state does not include uh, this reference point. And we can say that this is topological and this is non topological. And uh, we can show that uh, so the, uh, without gap closing, this state uh, does not uh, deform into, into each other. So that we can define the point gap to particle phases. And actually that this point gap to particle phases can expand the gap structures intrinsic to no Hamilton systems. For example, let's consider the Dirac chain methods. And in the usual Dirac chain method, we have a Dirac point here. Um, but uh, if, you, uh, if you add a perturbation by the non Hamiltonian terms, uh, we, can, we may have this kind of structures. And now Dirac point uh, becomes some, has uh, some extended structures. And uh, so the, uh, actually we found that there is a degeneracy in the real part of energy along this line. And we also have a uh, degeneracy uh, in the complex spectrum at this point. And uh, they, uh, they called uh, this, this was a uh, bar frame arc. And also uh, that this is called uh, the ex exceptional point. And actually the, by using the point gap to particle phases, uh, we can explain the why we have uh, this, uh, this uh, stable structure in the non Hamilton systems. So let's consider the contour uh, uh, around the excision point. Along this circle, we found that we have this kind of spectrum. Uh, this point corresponds to the excision point, and uh, and we found that uh, along <coughs> along the excision point we have a spectrum here, like this one. So this means that the so the excision point have a non-zero point gap to particle number. And because of this structure, uh, we, uh, we, can, we can have a topological stable excision point to here. So now I'll explain the, how to classify the point gap topological phases. 
And fortunately, bunch of the bulk of phages uh, can be classified by using the map to the harm shunt bulk of phages with chiral symmetries. Here I saw the typical spectrum of the point gap no harm Hamiltonians. And uh, we have a reference point here. And this is a state. And uh, we have a point gap because there is no border between this state and the reference point. In this case, we can show that the determinant of uh, this equation becomes non zero because uh, uh, there is no spectrum at the reference point. And corresponding to this point gap, no Hamilton Hamiltonian, uh, we can consider the gap, the Hamilton Hamiltonian with chiral symmetries. And this is a uh, Hamilton Hamiltonian. And uh, we can show that uh, if the original Hamiltonian has a point gap at the uh, reference point, we can show that uh, this uh, Hamilton Hamiltonian has a gap at uh, equal to zero. Actually, the, if you calculate the determinant of the curly edge, then the, we can show that this is non zero. So that we have gap at uh, equal to zero. And actually, we can show that the point gap of no Hamilton edge, uh, no Hamilton Hamiltonian closes if and only if. Uh, uh, gap of the, this Hamsham Hamiltonian closes. So that we have a, a corresponding between the gap, gap closing between the no Hamsham Hamiltonian and the Hamsham Hamiltonian. So as you know that the uh, gap closing is very necessary to obtain the uh, topological phase transition. So this implies that the uh, classification of the point at topological phases coincide with the classification of the topological insulator with chiral symmetries. So by using the knowledge of the uh, Classification on the Hamilton systems, uh, we can classify the uh, no Hamilton topological phases. Uh, based on the G result, uh, we have a complete uh, classification of both gap through and gapless no Hamilton topological phases. And uh, here I show the uh, so the so the, we have several uh, periodic table for the uh, no Hamilton topological phases. And here I show the uh, part of our uh, obtained uh, periodic table. Uh, this is a uh, periodic table for the gap through to topological phases with uh, AZ symmetry. And uh, as you can see that we have a point gap here and the line gap here and the corresponding topological number here. So if you change the gap structures, uh, topological structure can be different. And we also have a uh, periodic table for the gapless topological phases with uh, eta symmetry. And in this case, so we, we can classify the gapless structure uh, by using the two different uh, gap structure, point gap and the line gap structures. And we found that uh, so the corresponding to these two different gap structures, we have a different topological number. So anyway, so that we found that so the this topological number correspond to the, for example, this one is correspond to a two-dimensional topological laser, and this one correspond to the one-dimensional topological laser. And we also found that uh, so that this topological number is uh, correspond to the bar frame map with the extrusion point. Oh, I have a question, Professor. Sato. So so here LR means the real line gap and LI means the imaginary line gap. Yeah, yeah, yes. So the actually the so the uh, so the so it so the interpretation of the uh, as I mentioned before the uh, so the, we need the real structure to define to distinguish the real and the imaginary line gap. And then how can example, yeah uh, yes? Then how can these topological classification for LR and LI can be different because it looks like uh, we can always uh, deform these two chunk of the bar work bend like a 90 degree rotation to make the LR to LI, right? Yes, yes. So the, that's correct. And uh, actually, the, so the interpretation of the, uh, so the image line gap, huh? uh, we can show that we can deform the uh, Hamiltonian into the anti Hamilton Hamiltonian. Huh? So the anti Hamilton Hamiltonian is uh, just the Hamilton Hamiltonian times the image unit. So the so so that we can uh, regard this anti Hamilton Hamiltonian as a Hamilton Hamiltonian, and then we can uh, apply the uh, known classification to the okay, uh, other line gap system. Okay, I see. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much. So anyway, so that we can nicely explain the uh, existing the topological structures. 
And uh, we believe that this uh, very good table should capture the topological future intrinsic to no Hamishan systems. So now I, I let us start for following questions. As I mentioned before, the, uh, so the line gap structure, a uh, line gap topological phase uh, 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 is, uh, is a kind of a generalization of uh, Hamishan topological phases. So the so the so the we can obtain a uh, conventional barbar correspondence even in the uh, line gap topological phases. Um, but uh, so the point gap topological phases is uh, relatively new. So the so the question is uh, what is the best characteristic future of point gap topological phases? And uh, our answer is the uh, following. Actually, uh, we found that the uh, bulk state in the periodic boundary condition uh, can be the topological boundary state in the open boundary condition. So the, uh, this kind of uh, property uh, never appeared in the conventional Hamilton systems. So, the, so the, we can show that so the, so the in the periodic boundary condition, uh, we may have extended the bulk state. Uh, but in some situations, uh, so the, once we consider the open boundary conditions, all the bulk state uh, can be low currency. So this kind of situation never happened in the uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, conventional uh, Hamishan uh, topological phases. And we can show that, we can also show that this localization occurs as a, as a topological, uh, as a result of the topological number. And after this kind of behavior is known as a, a non-Hamishan scheme. So that this is the best uh, characteristic future of the point of topological phases. And uh, this is never appeared in the uh, conventional uh, Hamishan topological phases. So now I'll let like explain the more detail about the uh, non-Hamishan skin effect. Actually, the non-Hamishan skin effect is uh, extremely extreme sensitivity to boundary conditions. And the uh, no Hamishan uh, ha skin effect uh, occurs uh, in the uh, uh, Hatao Nelson model. So, the, so the, I would like to explain the Hatao Nelson model very quickly. And the Hatao Nelson model is a no Hamishan version of the one dimensional Anderson model. And originally, they consider the uh, uh, binding of the vortex in the superconductor and uh, the supercurrent. And uh, but the model is very simple, and uh, so the, this is uh, nothing but a one-dimensional uh, Anderson model with a uh, Hamishan uh, So this is on-site disorder potential, and uh, but the difference from the one-dimensional Anderson, uh, you conventional Anderson, uh, Anderson model, they consider the asymmetric hopping. So the forward hopping is different from the backward hopping. So the so this implies so the so this gives a no harm of the system. And in originally the Hatton Nelson considered the onside disorder potential, uh, but to obtain the no harm skin effect, uh, this term uh, is not necessary. So the we ignore the distance, and then we have obtained the spectrum without the disorder. And uh, here I show the spectrum in uh, under the period band condition and the open boundary condition. So the, as you can see, the spectrum in the period band condition is uh, very different from the uh, that in the open boundary condition. So this blue line is a spectrum in under the period band condition. This red one is a spectrum under the open boundary condition. They are very different. So this uh, this. <coughs> Uh, this phenomenon never happened in the in, uh, in, uh, uh, Hamishan systems. And we also found that the uh, state in the bulk state is very different. Actually, the, in the periodic boundary conditions, we have extended the bulk mode. But once we have open boundary conditions, so the, we have a localized scheme mode. And this is due to the instability of the non-Ham system. And it never happened in the conventional uh, Hamishan systems. And actually, the, we can uh, show that uh, this localized scheme mode originates from the point gap topological number. And the key observation is the correspondence between the uh, point gap non Hamilton systems and uh, uh, between the point gap non Hamilton systems and the uh, topological initiator with chiral symmetries. As I mentioned before, that we have a, a correspondence between the non Hamilton systems and the Hamilton systems. 
And uh, actually, we found that uh, the no Hamsha scheme mode uh, coincides with the topological zero mode of convinced the topological insulator with the chiral symmetry. So, the, so, the if, so the as I mentioned before, fragmentation of the, this, uh, this system are the same. So that if you if the, this system has a topological number, uh, this system also has a topological number. And we find that so the so the because of this topological number, uh, we can obtain no harm scheme mode because of this correspondence. And uh, here I should mention that uh, uh, this obtained scheme mode are bulk mode. Also, they can be identified with the topological zero mode in the topological insulator with chiral symmetries. As you know, that in uh, conventional Hamilton systems, we may have a uh, 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 topological boundary state, but in that case, so, so the, they are the, uh, part of the spectrum. Uh, but in this case, uh, we find that uh, the uh, scheme mode are the bulk mode. Actually, the, so, the, uh, so the, this property uh, can be understood once we consider the uh, physical origin of the scheme effect. Here I consider again the Hatton Nelson model. As I mentioned before, the Hatton Nelson model has asymmetry hopping. So the forward hopping is, uh, is different from the backward hopping. So because of this property, uh, so the, if you consider the uh, uh, very band condition, uh, they always have a constant flow due to the asymmetry hopping. So now consider what happens if you have a boundary with the systems. So even in, the, uh, even in the presence of the boundary of the system, we all we have asymmetric hopping. So the, so the states uh, tend to move to forward. So that we have accumulation of the bulk states. So the scheme mode uh, should be the bulk mode and uh, we can obtain the uh, bulk mode as a topological mode. Yeah, I also would like to mention that uh, no Hamilton no Hamilton scheme effect can be generalized in the presence of the soliton and or in the presence of the symmetries. Actually, the, by using the uh, nice consideration uh, given by the Jeffrey and uh, Charlie, and uh, we can uh, we can uh, include the effect of the defect in the topological period table, and we found that uh, this part corresponds to the scheme effect. And actually, we found that this topology number is a topology number uh, for the skin effect in the uh, Hatton Nelson model. And in this case, uh, uh, d equal to one and capital D equal to zero. Uh, but we can also consider the uh, three dimensional systems. And in this case, uh, if you consider the monopole of the system, uh, capital D equals three and uh, d, uh, small d equals three and capital D equal to two. So the so that we found that delta equal to one, and we should have uh, some skin effects. Actually, the, we can confirm the presence of the skin mode in the presence of the monopole. So the, if you have a monopole here, so that we have a skin mode, and we also have a symmetry protected uh, skin effect. And actually, the, if you consider this particular symmetry class. And we have a time reversal symmetry. And because of this time reversal symmetry, uh, we can have a chromatic DM sheet. And actually, we found that uh, so the so the we found that in this case, uh, uh, <coughs> skin mode can form the chromosphere. And they are localized in the opposite side. And uh, but uh, so the interpret uh, uh, but uh, so the so but uh, a uh, time reversal symmetry, uh, because of time reversal symmetry, uh, they does not mix. And so the, if we break the uh, time reversal symmetry, uh, they can mix and also the spin effect gone. So that we can have a symmetry protected skin effect. So anyway, so the, we can have a no harm the skin effect, even in the presence of the soliton and in the presence of the symmetry. So let me uh, summarize uh, my part one more talk. And no harm to still find the fundamental symmetry and uh, possible gap structures. So we can have a uh, line gap to per phases and uh, point gap to per phases. And uh, so the, because of the no harm to skin effect, uh, bulk mode can be to mode in point gap to per phases. 
So now I move to the second part of my talk, bar boundary correspondence in point gap topological phases. So the, my motivation is very simple. Here I show again the periodic table for point gap topological phases. As I mentioned before, the, this part corresponds to the skin effect. However, uh, we also have uh, uh, the other part. So the natural question is uh, what are the physical phenomena uh, corresponding to the other part? So to attack this problem, uh, we consider the three-dimensional uh, three dimensional, uh, point gap plus M model, which sometimes called uh, the non-Hamishan Wallsen method. Well, some people also call the, this state as uh, uh, exceptional topological insulators. So anyway, so the, we consider the, this Hamiltonian. And actually, the, this part is a Hamiltonian for the wire cell metals. So that's the reason why so the, we call this system as the non-Hamiltonian wire cell metals. And we also have a non-Hamiltonian term here. Here I show the spectrum in the, the uh, periodic boundary conditions. And uh, as you can see that we have a uh, bulk spectrum here and here, and, uh, but we also have a wild point here and here. And as you can see that we have a point gap at E equal to zero. And uh, actually that so, the, uh, so, so uh, we have a point gap here so that we can define the topological number. And uh, here I show again uh, our uh, period table. And uh, for the class A system, we have a uh, three dimensional topology number. And actually, the this topology number is a uh, three dimensional winding number. And actually, we can show that uh, this model has a non zero uh, winding number in this region. And so the, this is very similar to the, uh, so, the, so, so the, we, we can also consider that this is occupied state and this is empty state. So that's the reason why the, some people call this state as exception to So anyway, so the, so the we have this kind of spectrum and we have a non-zero topology number here. So we can expect that so the, so the some uh, presence of the surface state. So now consider what happened in under the uh, period of, uh, under the open boundary conditions. And uh, interestingly, uh, we have uh, two different behavior under the open boundary conditions. So first I consider the open boundary condition in Z directions. In this case, uh, we hope we obtain this kind of spectrum. And uh, this dark region corresponds to the bulk spectrum, um, but we also have a uh, surface state here. And uh, so, the, so, the, so as I mentioned before, the, along this region, uh, we have a bulk topology number. So the, uh, we can expect a uh, bulk boundary correspondence. However, the uh, situation is not so simple. Actually, the, if you consider the open boundary condition in the y direction, uh, we have a very different behavior. So the, we have uh, this kind of spectrum, and uh, we find that so the actually that this state is a skin mode. And as I mentioned before, the skin mode is a bulk mode. So the so the, this implies that once we have an uh, open boundary condition in the y direction, uh, we have a uh, skin mode inside the uh, inside the uh, point gap. So this means that the uh, uh, point gap closes. Uh, once we have, uh, uh, once we consider the open boundary condition in the y direction. So this means that uh, we can define the, so, so the same, and we also find that there is no uh, conventional surface state here. So it suggests that there is no bulk boundary correspondence. Uh, that's uh, there is a subtle point in the bulk boundary correspondence in the uh, uh, point gap topological phases. And, but the uh, uh, solution of this problem is very simple. Actually, the key to resolve this problem is to use the bulk topology number in open boundary conditions. And uh, different from the conventional Hamilton systems, uh, for non-Hamilton systems, 
bar spectrum in open binary condition can differ from that in the valid binary condition because of the non Hamilton scheme. That's uh, we need to use a uh, back to point number in open binary condition uh, to predict the binary state correctly. Actually, the, so the we can uh, once we, cons we consider the back to point number is open binary condition, uh, we have a uh, very consistent pictures. So I consider that again the bulk uh, open binary condition in the dead directions. Here I show the bulk spectrum in the open binary conditions. So in this case, so even we take the open binary condition in, in uh, Z direction, uh, we have a point gap at uh, equal to zero. So that we can define the topology number. Because now we have an open binary condition, uh, we need to use the uh, real space representation to define the uh, winding number. But once we, de, uh, once we consider the real space representation of the topology number, we can calculate, we can obtain a uh, very defined topology number. And also, the, we can show that uh, the system supports a non zero topology number, even in the open binary condition. And this is very consistent with the uh, uh, presence of the surface state here. And we also have a consistent picture, even in the open binary, uh, so we have a bar binary correspondence. And we also have a very consistent picture, even in the open binary condition in the y direction. In this case, uh, so that we have a bar spectrum like this one. As I mentioned before, the, uh, because of the skin effect here, uh, by bar point gap closes. So this means that uh, so nowhere defined the point number in y, uh, open binary condition in the y direction. So that we, can, we, we don't expect a uh, uh, surface state. So this is very consistent with the uh, bulk boundary correspondence. Uh, therefore, once one uses the bulk boundary correspondence in the open boundary condition, uh, one can predict the surface state obeying the bulk boundary correspondence even in the point gap to point gap region. So, the, uh, so you might think that at the first sight, uh, this result is simply generation of the bulk boundary correspondence in line gap to point gap regions. Uh, but uh, actually, this is not true. Actually, there, there is an important difference. Uh, we found that positive bulk point gap topology number uh, can be different between the open boundary condition and the point gap to uh, uh, periodic boundary condition. Actually, the so no Hamilton skin mode may close the point gap in open boundary conditions, and that they can make the point gap topology number ill-defined. Here I show again the period table for the point gap topology phases in period boundary conditions. As I mentioned before, the, this part corresponds to the skin effect. So that we have a different spectrum uh, between the period boundary condition and the open boundary conditions. And as you can see that under the period boundary, boundary condition, uh, we have a point gap at uh, equal to zero. Uh, but if you consider the open boundary conditions, so the point gap closes. So this implies that so the uh, this point uh, number becomes trivial once we consider the open boundary conditions. And we also found that by using the dimensional reductions, we can relate this point number to the one dimensional point number. So this means that the uh, uh, auto party of uh, this Z number and this number always result in the scheme mode inside the point here. So the this topology number also become trivial in the open boundary conditions. So that we have a different uh, period table under the open boundary conditions. So consequently, we have a different period table for the point gap topology phases under the open boundary conditions. So here I summarize uh, how the topology, uh, how the period table changes uh, from the period boundary condition to the open boundary conditions. Uh, this number corresponds to the uh, topology number is a uh, period boundary condition, and this number is uh, the topological top uh, number in the open boundary conditions. Now the uh, one dimensional topological number uh, becomes trivial, and uh, this topological number becomes an even number because uh, uh, auto, auto number auto uh, auto integer already implies the presence of the skin effect. So anyway, we have a different uh, period table for point gap topological number under the open boundary conditions. 
So finally, we can also prove the bulk bundle correspondence for the results and preview table in the open bundle conditions. So let me summarize my talk. And uh, non-harm TC give light to the new topological features uh, never seen in uh, conventional topological insulators. And the clarification on the point gap topological phases uh, can be different between the uh, uh, building boundary function and open boundary functions. And the non trivial point gap topological number in your open boundary function result in topological stable surface space. Uh, thank you very much for attention. Okay, thanks, Prof Professor Sato, for a very nice talk. And I think uh, we look for questions. So for anyone who has a question, please raise your hand. Uh, oh, we have a question from Sonu. Yeah, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you for the nice talk. So, I I just to can, can you comment on if uh, so you mentioned the Hatham mentioned model if we have a disorder on site disorder so can you comment if uh, we have also disorder in the coupling then 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 what will be basically uh, sorry so then how this non Hermitian effect will take place or. Uh, uh, so the, so you mentioned uh, uh, so you you're considering the Hatanes model. Yeah, means uh, this uh, non Hermitian model. So if we have, let's say, on-site disorder. Yeah. Then maybe we can com compute this winding number. Sorry, winding numbers, and if they are well defined, then we will have skin modes. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. so the, even the presence of the so the so the uh, disorder in the uh, hopping, so the we can define the topology number. Okay. And actually, the we found that so the so in, in that case also so we, we we don't use we cannot use the uh, uh, topology number in the moment of space. Okay. Uh, but uh, but uh, so the we can use uh, topology number in the real space for the. But the point number defined by using the uh, uh, twisted boundary question. Okay. And by using this number, so that we can define the topology number. Okay. And okay. also the we, we so the uh, actually the, so the uh, I have never considered this kind of uh, uh, disorder, uh, but uh, we can expect uh, some phase solution occurs okay. uh, in the uh, strong disorder. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. thank you. Thank you. And we have a question from Hanbit. Oh, thanks for a nice talk. Oh, I, I, I heard that the PT PT symmetry is plays important role in non homogeneous system. So is is the PT symmetry uh, also used in the mapping that you explain between the uh, uh, point gap non homogeneous states and the topological state with chiral symmetry? Uh, yes, I mean, yes. And uh, even in the presence of the piece symmetry, so the, we can use the same technique. And actually, the, so the, we can expand the, so the, for example, the, so the, uh, using this map, mm -hmm. so the way we can, uh, we can map the uh, uh, system with the PT symmetry with a uh, system with uh, PT symmetry and the chiral symmetry. And uh, so the, actually the, we can actually expand the, so the topological phase transition because in, uh, so the, as you know that, so the, we can have a, uh, so the real, real and complex spectrum uh, transition in the case of the PT, PT symmetry. And uh, this kind of transition uh, nicely explained by the point gap topological number. Thanks. Uh, and uh, and I have a uh, one, one more uh, question. So, is there any uh, non homogeneous uh, states which corresponds to the topological uh, superconductor in homogeneous system? So, by using this mapping, or uh... uh, so the it's, it's hard to explain. So the uh, 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 as you know the so the so the we have some mapping. 
-hmm. And uh, but uh, so the mapping implies that uh, so the just the topological phase transition point. And as you oh. know, that so the spe uh, spectrum is completely different. So that uh, this is a complex spectrum, and this system has a, a real spectrum. So the mm -hmm. spectrum is very different. Uh, but fortunately, so the, we have the same uh, topological phase transition point. So mm -hmm. that implies that so the uh, so the this topological number uh, can be used to define the topological number in a uh, non hamiltonian system. But but the spectrum is very different. Okay, okay, thank you. I also have a question. So I wonder about what's the G classification meaning in the Hatano Nielsen model. So in the case of the uh, your map, your, you can do dual mapping between Hermitian system and non Hermitian system by doubling the non Hermitian system. So yeah, yeah. in the case of the Hermitian, uh, G class really means that we have a number of the uh, boundary mode. So it yes. so really, really the winding number one and winding number two will be different in the number of the boundary mode. But what does it yeah. mean? In terms of the Hatan Nielsen model, so so the for example, the so the so the uh, we, we can so change the so the for example, the if the if the whole hopping rather than the backward hopping, uh -huh. we have a whole one flow, so that uh -huh. we can expect the, so that we have a scheme model at uh -huh. this side, uh -huh. but the, we can uh, 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 <laughs> we can change the relative strong between the forward hopping and the backward hopping. Uh -huh. And in this case, the winding number uh, becomes a minus one. And in this case, we have opposite, uh, well, mm -hmm. or local change, opposite side. Mm -hmm. How about the so, winding number two or three? Or how does that manifest? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, uh, so the, for example, we can actually uh, con uh, consider the winding number two model. And in this case, so the, so the localized mode, uh, so the, and uh, I should mention that so the so the so in the uh, actual system we have we always have finite uh, systems. So the right. so that uh, as you can see that that so the uh, so the in we can take the uh, any reference point to define the winding number. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the uh, this and uh, this uh, reference point uh, gives a uh, uh, zero mode. And this means that so the once we consider the uh, infinite, uh, so the uh, semi-infinite system, then the Hatton-Ness model shows a localized model uh, inside uh, these regions. Uh, but uh, so the once we consider the open boundary condition, so that we have we can we only have uh, this mode. And uh, so the so the, if you consider the so the winding number two model. And uh, we can also have uh, uh, some state in inside this one if you consider the same same infinite model. Mm -hmm. So that we have uh, so the uh, twice the uh, twice the number of uh, our uh, local mode. Uh, but once we have a uh, uh, open boundary condition, so the so the number of the state is defined by the size of the system. So the so at, at that case so, so the. We, we just have a have a conventional uh, conventional uh, uh, skin effect. Okay. So the situation can be different between uh, semi infinite system and the final size system. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, thank oh, you. I have a, one more question. Yeah, go ahead. A very short one. Oh, so oh, is is there any experimental realization for the non Hermitian system? Oh, yes, yeah. So, after the, so the, for example, the, uh, so the, so the, this is the, this is the, uh, so the bar framework realized by using the photonic crystals. And uh, so the, uh, so the, uh, basically, the, so the, uh, so the, up to, up to this time, so most experiment was done in the in the artificial uh, quantum systems like uh, hotonic crystal and uh, the, or the electric systems, and uh, so the, there is uh, some uh, prediction even in the conventional uh, quantum matter system, uh, but uh, so the, I, I guess that so the experimental detection is not so easy. Mm -hmm. 
So that is the reason why it's not so up to this time. Uh, we only have an experiment in the, in the, in the artificial uh, quantum systems. It, it is difficult to realize in real condensed matter system, right? Uh, I mean, that, so the controlling disorder is not so easy. And uh, so, the, so uh, we also know that uh, in uh, strong correlated systems, uh, we, can, we can also expect uh, this kind of behavior. Uh, mm -hmm. But we need uh, uh, low temperature or uh, high resolution uh, to detect uh, this kind of structure. That's the reason why I guess that uh, so the, so the, uh, so the, 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 there is no experimental uh, report up to, up to this time. Thank you very much. Okay, so if we have no further questions, then we thank again. Masatoshi Sato for his nice talk.